Aha, Scots. Hello everyone, and today we're going to have a look at White Dwarf issue 127. Good evening everybody, and here is another blast from the past, Games Workshop's monthly games magazine, White Dwarf issue 127. Um, the date of this one is not shown on the spine, however it did cost a huge £1.50. If anyone can tell us what that actually equates to in today's money, please let me know. Anyway, let's have a go through. So we start through and we can see we had some novels out. Uh, Wolf Riders for Warhammer. Another book called Conrad here. I wonder if that's about Conrad Kurz. I very much doubt it. Moving on through the magazine, we have uh, Games Workshop Sheffield has an in-depth look and also leads. And here are painting demonstrations, which we could have attended to on my birthday, apparently back in the day, by Dale Hurst and Ivan Bartleet. Are these still guys? Are these still guys? <laughs> are these guys still active in the hobby? I'd like to know. Uh, Sheffield staff, uh, Rick Grant, Lee Birch, Richard Collier, and Mike Sheehan. Are you still out there? Some questions and answers about Warhammer Fantasy Battle, and then some events. Uh, there was an advanced Hero Quest 7R with Jervis Johnson, Simon Forrest, and Andy Warwick um, back in July of that year. Many, many events going on. Here's a list of uh, retail stores. And we're into the 1990 Golden Demon Finals. David Soper wins, holding up the Grey the great Demon, the Golden Demon Slayer Sword, which I think may have even been that Nurgle Predator, which we saw before. Uh, here's Steve Howe, the Golden Demon organizer, and he looks very angry. Perhaps he didn't want his picture taken. <laughs> Golden Demon winners, here we go. Uh, vehicle, David Soper. I'm willing to guess that it was uh, the Nurgle Dreadnought. Anyway, look at these winners. We have Mark Gibbons, second place mounted miniature. Looks to be a trumpet blower on an eagle. These are fantastic. This Skeletal Reaver Titan down here, absolutely brilliant. The Gene Stealer Patriarch on Throne, as a lot of you know, is my favorite mini of all time. Uh, with a nice little diorama piece and an intriguing Predator conversion there. Uh, some other good miniatures over here. I like the old Lord of Change and I like this old Inquisitor model. Notice that second place standard bearer went to a, a uh, Nurgle Nurgling and look at the old Nurgle logo. It looked a bit more like something else back in the day. And here we have the Eldar. So this is all about the Eldar this month, which coincides nicely with current events in Warhammer 40,000 with the uh, Psychic Awakening. So we had uh, some fluff here describing them before the fall. A lovely piece of artwork. Let's see if I can just appears to be an Eldar with his uh, rose, his personal travel car here. And is this perhaps a craft world? Looks like an, looks like Lothlorien from Lord of the Rings there. Some wonderful art tells us about the spirit stones, uh, psychic engineering, I can't remember the, is it something bone, wraith bone, how they grow that. Eldar runes, this artwork is fantastic. The sweeping hawk really does look great. And it proceeds to tell us about the fall of the Eldar. And uh, my word, this piece of artwork, the Eldar do look very, very alien in this. Let's see if I can zoom in and show you that piece. Um, about how they were intervened by Slanesh and their depravity. Uh, a lovely piece of fluff here. One day I might read that to you. Uh, a dead Eldar here, being carried by his friend, or her friend I should say. There is a picture 
of the craft world itself. I don't know if we get many pe uh, official pieces of art for craft world, but there it is. The the Bale Tan craft world, or Bile Tan, Bale Tan, Bale Tan. No, I can't pronounce these words. Um, some more fluff here. And then it proceeds to tell us about all the aspect warriors. A man with some lovely, lovely face paint and tattoos here. This um, Howling Banshee piece of art has been doing the rounds since, and it still holds up very well today. Uh, the Avatar, the, with the bloody hand, we've seen him before in an old retro review. Here it tells us about Warlocks and the other, uh, the other, the other Eldar HQ units. This Warlock, this uh, artwork is by Jez Goodwin. It really is fantastic. I like how they've credited the artist in these pieces. Some more fluff. I wonder if that's all to do with the same piece. Um, then it gives us an actual army list. Avatar, 300 points. Warlock, 100 points, plus 25 per ability. So here we are, the army list. If you'd like to play uh, Rogue Trader, or is the second edition Eldar, you could use these rules. So we have the Avatar here. Dire Avengers are still around. The Fire Dragon. See, this artwork still is fantastic. Probably better than the current artwork, in my opinion. The Howling Banshees, we're seeing a lot of them nowadays. Striking Scorpions, fantastic. All these, I'm assuming, are going to get a, an update soon. My favourite Aspect Warriors, the Swooping Hawks. And then the Dark Reapers over here. Uh, Ex-Archers or ex -arc. And your basic Guardian squad there. Moving on to support teams. Oh, it even gives us the name of the runes. The Eye of Isha, the Reborn, the Cosmic Serpent, and the Shrine of Assyrian. Uh, so, uh, the Baal Tan, your logo means the Reborn. Oh, it means the Rebirth of Ancient Days. The Song of Ulthanash, the Quest for Enlightenment, and the Light in the Infinite Darkness. That does sound fantastic. Moving on, some Warlocks again, some Runic Powers. There we go, Fortune. That's been in there for a long, long time. The Farseer with his bizarre alien hat. A Farseer banner, which looks fantastic. This artwork really is incredible. Uh, another piece of fluff here. Harlequins and some warrior powers for your Exarchs. Here we've moved on to some D100 selections for different weapons, such as the Power Glove, the Web of Skulls, that sounds very intriguing, and Power Glove and Shuriken Pistol. Look at this. Here we have some lovely full colour artwork of three of the same thing. Why do we have three? Or is that just a picture of a squad? Oh no, they're slightly different colour schemes. Blue hat, yellow hat. He's more of a pinky magenta red than the other ones. Howling Banshees are all ivory. Dark Reapers then were a dark blue. I thought they were black. Very interesting. Some Warlock Force weapons here. Uh, independent stockists and here we have Rob Baker's amazing Marines now this ninja grey knight terminator conversion I bet you've never seen a ninja grey knight before and the uh, death wing this is intriguing because this is uh, from the old fluff where the death wing were kind of like American Indians and they've really gone to town with that theme on here they do look like proper American Indians. He even has a tomahawk. So that's fantastic. And here we are, the best skeletons that you could ever get. Um, much better than the current skeletons, in my opinion. Ah, Scots for Epic, which back then was known as Space Marine. Uh, Mark Gibbons has done this lovely piece of artwork down here. Moving on to some Marauder miniature skeletons. These look brilliant. These really do look good. I love the older skeletons. I think they look fantastic. Uh, back to the squat army list building. Uh, 
Perth Guard. I just thought they were quite interesting. Here we go, a marvellous squat on trike. Is that a heavy weapons trike? With multi-melter on the top, looks absolutely fantastic. One day, we'll see these guys again. Uh, Flame Productions, not Black Library, uh, Flame Productions we had back then. So that's interesting, the old book. And some uh, great, great Games Workshop Preston uh, vouchers here. I can get you 25% 20, off any Games Workshop or Citadel product. So if anyone wants to borrow those to save themselves a lot of money, send me an email. Uh, tactics for the guild trike there. Oh, we've got a stuck together page. Someone must have enjoyed the next piece. A sample squat war host. Well, um, I'm not too intrigued, although these, the way they've built this old army looks quite interesting. With these, I guess you take photos of these, photocopies rather, and then uh, cut them out. Notice back then in the day, the squats had your standard tactical support and assault. They had nobles, which looked like terminators on motorbikes. Guild bikes, a robot, access to robots, and rhinos, termites, they've made a return. And uh, many other interesting things. The mole, which was a slightly bigger version. And then obviously after the mole, we have the gigantic hellbore. One day we'll see that again. If you like a job at Games Workshop, you could perhaps apply. I might even send an application off to be a retail manager to this address and see what happens. <laughs> That'd make a good video, wouldn't it? Um, so here we are again, how to make a detachment. This is just the army list, I think. It just tells you what you've got. Um, the mail order service there, someone with a genuine bolter and heavy bolter there. And a selection of many of the bits, because this is back in the day when they actually would sell you individual bits. And always remember, Citadel miniatures are not toys. So if your wife says, why are you playing with those toys? You can show her this, and tell her she's wrong. <laughs> what are these, uh, what was the old heavy bolt? Are these the Imperial Guard weapon sprues? That looks fantastic. I love these long barrel las, can las cannons, las guns. I think they look brilliant. On to the catalog pages, where we see that 299 would net you five aspect warriors. Just think about that for a moment. Five metal Eldar for 299. My word, that is cheap. That's so cheap. It's unbelievably cheap. So here they all are, the old Eldar. The Harley Quins, some of my favorite minis of all time. And some random Orc Odd Boys. Not sure why they're chucked in here. But they do look fantastic. These old models have so much character. And a little showcase on the back of the other. Ah, see, the Dark Reapers have moved to black already. Literally in the space it's taken us to do this video, they've changed their black scheme. There's my favourite, the Swooping Hawk. Um, what is your favourite aspect? Please tell me why. Please leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it, or even perhaps subscribe if you're feeling very kind. And I'd like to say thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you all again very soon. Goodbye.